everybody. Welcome to another episode of Voices of Recovery. I'm your host, Michelle Ike, and this is my book, How to Kill an Addiction, Recovery with God, which has just been released this month and is available on Amazon. So I'd really appreciate it if you'd check that out. Every week, I interview somebody who has overcome a life-controlling issue with God's help. And today's episode is going to be a little bit different because I'm interviewing somebody who is helping people who have life controlling issues and addictions get help. And I'm going to go ahead and pull up my guest now. Welcome, Jared. Hello. Hey, Jared. Thanks for How having you doing? me. Oh, thanks for um, joining us. Yeah. And yeah. God Glad is good. To be here. Yeah. Awesome. Well, Jared, I'll have you introduce yourself to the audience. Tell us a little bit about yourself. Yeah, my name is Jerry Galdi. I grew up in the Pacific Northwest up here north of Seattle and um, lived here basically my entire life. I've got, uh, I married my wife pretty, pretty young. Uh, we've been together for almost 20 years. And um, shortly after high school, we have two kids that we homeschool. They're eight and 10, uh, two boys. And um, yeah, my life is very, 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 very busy providing housing for recovering addicts right now. That's, uh, that's where I'm at. Amazing. That is amazing. I love that. And when I heard about your story, I was excited to have you on the show because I really want you to talk to our audience about what you do. So it sounds like you have a very full life. And again, we appreciate you coming on because I know that you're busy and eight and 10. Those are that's a fun age, especially with Christmas right around the corner. I bet we're a little excited over there. Very excited. We're actually uh, we're actually gearing up to kind of uproot. Uh, uproot ourselves and so we're, we're like really excited about Christmas with the boys and then we're we're actually taking a long road trip moving to Florida here shortly so um, very exciting they're, they're excited for Christmas and excited for the beach very soon <laughs> yeah absolutely yeah. I love that well Jared let's uh, share with our audience what you do uh, you mentioned that you're providing safe spaces for recovering addicts to find their God-given purpose. I absolutely love that. I love everything about it, the safe space, what you're doing, and finding their God-given purpose. Because when you have a vision in front of you, it's easier to break free from your past and the things that are holding you back. Would you agree with that? Amen. I completely agree with that. Yeah, it's it's about being able to see something new, especially when, you know, so we, we serve recovering addicts that have, uh, you know, drug and alcohol um, abuse has been a, a huge part of their lives. And what we notice is that even, even the basic things in life, getting those things back in order and having a vision for what your life actually can be is very, very, very important. That's awesome. And that's really why I do Voices of Recovery, because I want to give people hope. I want to share these stories that in the beginning, they seem like this is impossible. This person's never going to change. The situation's never going to get better. And then when God comes into the story, everything transforms. So I, I absolutely love what you're doing. Can you share a little bit, Jared, about how you got involved with this and just how everything started for you with helping people in recovery and providing housing for them? Yeah, no, absolutely. So um, God really, really pressed it in me to, to get into real estate against my, against my will. Um, <laughs> I got into real estate about... Uh, well, about eight years ago, I guess, in 2012. And my mom's been in real estate for a long time. So we we own a, a firm together. And so I got into, I was working in real estate and working at church, just like a lot. And so um, what that looked like was, was basically, you know, uh, it, it felt like I was doing something for that God would set in front of me. And it felt like it didn't work over and over and over again. And I just mm -hmm. kept pushing hard. I'm a mission driven person. I don't ever stop working. I don't ever stop pushing towards what God wants from me. And so at each turn when it didn't work, I would get, I would get a little frustrated why, mm -hmm. why it didn't work. And I would say in this season, it became very apparent that I was supposed to buy this first house in Marysville, Washington, where I grew up. Um, and, and then as soon as that house opened and as soon as I watched what the Oxford house who we work with was doing, I, I knew that everything I'd ever been through and everything I'd ever fought for was for these people. I knew that it was for this mission. I knew that it was for this business. So, um, mm -hmm. so I, I got into, I did investments. I did all sorts of different church businesses that we, that we ran a farmer's market and a coffee stand and all sorts of things and learned, learned the back end of, of several different businesses. And then um, 
amazing timing. This first Oxford house came into my life the same time my partner did. And my partner owns a very, very, very large company. And uh, he basically created a, a cryptocurrency bank. And so he's raised a ton of money for different ventures. So we, we met at the same time that this Oxford house did. Uh, awesome. came into my life. And so he's, he's able to raise a lot of money and I'm able to design systems and serve these people like crazy. So I love it. That's amazing, Jared. You know, you mentioned doing things that don't work and I can definitely relate to that. It feels like you're driving on square tires. Like you're in the car, you're, you're pushing the gas as hard as you can, but yeah. it just is clunky. And then when you get into your field of favor and you step into your calling with God, everything flows. And then, like you said, he starts to connect you with the right people and off you go. I, I love that. That's incredible. Yeah. I think that's, you know, I think it's like a, for me, I keep saying it comes back to a foundational, it comes back to Romans eight twenty eight, right? It's, yes. like, it's like, you, it's like, you sort of believe that it's like, you sort of believe that God's going to make everything good. And then all of a sudden it clicks that, wait a second, he's been in control the entire time. Those square tires were yeah. for a reason. Like if I, if I had round tires, I would have been pushing in wrong, the wrong direction right. and done something for me rather than for him. And so yes. I, absolutely. This is a season where like, I, I just recognize what those square tires were for. I understand fully now that he's going to like, once, once I'm in that field of favor, now that I'm, now that I'm there, I understand that all of it was for a reason rather than being frustrated why something didn't work. Now I just understand that some things aren't going to work and he's still in control. Absolutely. Absolutely. That's so good. And Romans 828 is definitely one of my life verses. And for those of you who don't know it, it's and we know that God works all things together for good for those who love him and who are called according to his purposes. And God wastes nothing. And when I interview people like yourself and others who have overcome life controlling issues, that's the message time and time again, that they had hardships, they had difficulties. They, they weren't just driving on square tires. They had no tires, <laughs> yeah. right? There were, there were seasons with no tires, no vehicle, but God then uses it and it's all training for raining. And so when he connects those dots and you get into that field of favor, into that flow, you're unstoppable because God is the one making it happen. And it's just an incredible way to live. Yeah. I would say on to, to piggyback on that, I would say like I, my business partner, Travis, like I said, he's, he's raised a lot of money for a lot of different things. And um, he, I would say he's almost, you know, he definitely enjoys my level of faith and understanding that God's going to make the next thing happen. But I would say it's almost my level of faith at this point, knowing that God is in control and, and kind of and, and gives us the tools necessary to every step is probably annoying to him because of how strong <laughs> my faith is in this. And the, I'm, right. like, I'm like, it's fine, man. Like we just, we can take rest knowing that we're we work hard and God's going to make the next thing show up that needs to show up or the next person to show up that needs to show up or the next hundred thousand dollars that needs to show up. Like it, I, it's, it's going to happen at every turn and, yeah. and it is. And so, so cool. when, yeah, when I say it, it's almost annoying to him, but since God makes it show up every single time, you know, I'm watching his, I'm watching his faith grow too. It's pretty cool. That is cool. And when you're around people who are full of faith, you can't help but level up with your with your faith as well. So Amen. amazing. Well, Jared, you mentioned something about the Oxford House. So can you tell us a little bit more about that and how you're involved with that organization? Yeah. So the Oxford House has been around since 1975 and they are they actually lease homes from investors like us. And so they they lease out all, all, just over 3,000 homes. I think the number right now is 3,008 homes that they lease out in 49 different states and five different countries now. Um, and what they are is they, they're a self-run, self-supported uh, house. Each house is like it's, it's in, an individual house and the people within that house vote democratically to run the house as a family. And so their accountability systems are amazing. They've been put in place, you know, like I said, since 1975. And the the accountability that they have in the house is just is awesome. You know, there's you cannot use again, uh, otherwise you'll you'll be out uh, quickly. Right. You have to do your chores. If your chore is to clean the kitchen every night, then you clean the okay. kitchen every night, or you're going to get fined. And then if you do it multiple times, you don't live there anymore. If okay. you miss curfew, you don't live there anymore. Mm -hmm. um, and they're, they're really amazing. So they have a large network of, of what they call outreach workers around the country that, that help 
start these houses and help them manage the houses and put the systems in place. Uh, but it's really cool that each house is its own self-sustaining house. So, okay. Yeah. That's amazing. And so you mentioned to me earlier that these houses are located all across the country. Is that correct? Correct. 49 states. The, the only state that uh, we're still working on is North Dakota. Okay. Well, you're very close. 49 yep. out of 50 is not bad. Yep. So if somebody were to want to maybe help out with this organization or get help from this organization, what would be the next steps? Yeah, it depends on the on the level of help. They always need local help uh, with furniture, with donations, things like that to, mm -hmm. to you know add to their sustainability. You can go to OxfordHouse.org and and check them out there for um, for kind of their system, what they do. Uh, if you want to do real estate investment and invest in those houses, we can certainly help uh, help with that. And so I'll put you know my my information in there where you can you can invest in our company and invest in houses and kind of see the amazing work that we're doing through our company. Um, and then if you need help from the organization, they they you have to interview to live in a house. So it, you can't be court mandated into a house. You have to interview to get into a house, kind of on the other side of the treatment. But you can go to OxfordVacancies.com and uh, and find a local vacancy near you. And so you can interview to get into a house. OK, fantastic. So after the interview here, I'll definitely post those so people can check that out. But it sounds like an amazing organization. So, Jared, what are some of the needs that you're seeing with people in recovery? We know that 2020 has been a challenging year for many in a lot of different areas. And we're hearing reports of relapses, increasing um, people's mental health, not being in the best place with anxiety, depression, those kinds of things. What are you seeing on your end? Yeah, I, I mean, I'm, I'm going to sound much like uh, echoing what you just said. I mean, it's it's tough out there. You know, I don't I don't have any of the statistics in front of us. I've heard them from Oxford House, but I mean, mm -hmm. relapse is so is is on the rise. And like you said, mental mental struggles. We're watching that and being able to kind of coach people in our houses through you know focusing on what they can control and things like that. But it's right. it's 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 on the rise. You know, something fierce. So within our houses, what we're seeing is. Um, is some of that there's like some panic that sets in and we just kind of help with their normal day-to-day -day stuff like we you know the the mental struggle of kind of even when you're in recovery just being uh being at home and kind of lot you know kind of in in their house there's been some COVID right. cases in houses and people don't leave their houses and so mm -hmm. each little thing can become a big mountain so for us we really just try to love them through it. it's like last you know in the middle of the night on saturday i get a call from our house in milwaukee wisconsin there's a leak in the there's a leak in the in the plumbing and, it, and there's water on the basement floor and we don't know what to do and jared can you help us it's like of course yeah i'm here this is what i do uh let's let's it's it's okay there you can't you Hi. can't control that water leak i'm gonna get somebody over there to control that for you but you Hi. can kind of see that see that uh that panic set in in little you know in little ways because right. it's it's tough out there and they're um they're interviewing people who are struggling badly and then the turnover within our houses is another part of that where uh, we don't necessarily see the effects of that because oxford house is pretty amazing at continually paying landlords because they they understand that the the landlords are you know being able to scale and buy more and more houses is very important but the turnover within the houses has been you know, it's been vast. There's um, mm -hmm. we have a house in Pueblo, Colorado, where, you know, they had four people who four out of eight, eight women, they kind of got together and relapsed together. And mm -hmm. when you relapse, you live in an Oxford house, you don't live there anymore. So when right. you go from eight people paying the rent on a house to four people overnight, you know, that's a strain on everybody. It's obviously really, right. really sad for the, for the people that, uh, that relapse, but that, the, in a system of recovery, if you if you relapse and you're around other people in recovery, you you can't be there anymore, and so sure. they had to had to move out, and then it's a really big strain on the people within the house to try to pay the rent um, and try to make sure their utilities are paid and try to make sure all that stuff happens. But mm -hmm. um, it's just it's just tough out there. So we're trying to like in those situations, we let them know, hey, we we love you. Thank you for thank right. you for communicating with us. We're we're here as your partner. We're not. Uh, we're not we're not landlords that are gonna that are gonna be super um, you know frustrated by by good communication no matter what's happening just have good communication with us we're here to love you guys and so but yeah you're seeing it in all directions it's it's very very tough absolutely well 
there is a lot of negativity out there, but at the same time, there are many positive things happening. And sometimes you have to be the change. You have to be the solution to the problem and not just say, well, that's too bad. You know, I, I feel really bad about that. No, we can take action to help in those situations. And it sounds like the philosophy of the Oxford House, I, I don't know too much about them, but just from what you're saying, they're there to help if you want to get help, if you want to get better. Like if you're serious about recovery and moving forward with God, we're here to help you, but we're not going to tolerate nonsense, basically. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. And they're not, a, they're, a, you know, they're much like the recovery community. They're not, um, they're not a Christian organization. We, we certainly are uh, with the houses right. that, that we own. And I, as I put it, we, we inject Jesus into our houses uh, the, the best, uh, the best that we can. But I would say, yeah, you, to live in an Oxford house, you, you, it's, it's, you have to want to get better and you have to want uh, recovery and you have, there's, there's work to be done if you want to recover and get back to a normal life. And so um, to, to sustain living in an Oxford house, there is, there is, you have to want to live there. Absolutely. You're right. Yeah. Well, that's very important. And one of the things that we talked about earlier was that you want to provide safe spaces for people in recovery to find their God-given purpose. So let's get back to that God-given purpose, Jared. Even in the midst of COVID and quarantine and a lot of unrest and just a lot of things going on associated with 2020, if you can keep that God-given destiny in front of you, we know that God doesn't change. I mean, he gave me some amazing promises and things to do in January of 2020. And he didn't come to me in March and say, ah, never mind <laughs> because COVID, I, I really can't do what I said I was going to do in your life. Right. We know that his promises are true and, you know, they're yes and amen, and it doesn't change, but not everybody sees that. So you need people of faith like yourself, great faith and vision to keep reminding people, hey, hang on. God is faithful to his word and we can't be so tied to what's happening in the natural that we forget the supernatural. Does that make sense? Absolutely does make sense. I, I completely agree with you. There's a uh... Uh, that's a that's a big portion of my job. You can look at my job, job description at this point, and I'm uh, acqu acquisitions. I buy houses. I I do construction on those houses to get them ready. We add additional bedrooms and add all sorts of things, and we fix up houses. We make them really really amazing places for them to live. They are not what you would expect. We have beautiful houses around the country for these people to live in, in really really nice neighborhoods. Uh, I'm also property manager. If something breaks at two o'clock in the morning on Saturday. Uh, you know, I'm, I'm there to do that, but I take right. my, I take my, my spiritual side to that, you know, to the, to the next level. And that's my, that's my most important job. So, um, I totally agree with that. My, you know, there's, there's, there's multiple people where I kind of, where I kind of know in, in, within Oxford houses and with, within our, with our realm, I know that, um, I know, I know that, like you said, God is unchanging and he's, he is, he is unchanging in my life. And so if I'm able to, to be his vessel to these people, to bring his word and bring his, his message to these people, I, I take that role very seriously. So I have to be even keeled through no matter what's, what's happening, no matter if I'm working 130 hours a week or whatever wow. the case is, I'm here to love on these people right now and build like right now, one, you know, one thing I'm, I'm sure we'll, probably get into I'll just dive into it right now in this in this is I'm creating um, a, a portion of my work is creating a space for um, a guy who's worked for the Oxford house for quite a long time creating a space for him to operate within his God-given purpose he was a much like where much like where I said I I went through a lot of different things that didn't work like all of us that square tire I'm I'm watching Todd who come, who's coming to work for us starting the first of the year. I'm watching him recognize all of those square tires and recognize that wow, God was in control the entire time and everything that he's ever been through is for this moment. And that's I think that that's that's the case for all of us. And so he's coming on the first of the year. We get to kind of really really level up his life while designing, 
you know, a really broad scope of work for him to really pour into the Oxford house and love on them and be our property yeah. manager and construction manager. But he's, he was a contractor and then he got it. And then he had, um, some addiction problems with, mm. you know, some serious addiction problems with, with some drugs and things. And then he got recovered and he started living in Oxford houses and kind of poured into their system and really started getting his life back. And then he started working for the Oxford house. And now I would say that he, he does side work and he builds out garages and he builds out houses to get them ready for Oxford House while he works for Oxford House. And then he's he probably works 80 hours a week helping helping with Oxford House and pouring into people. And right now, the spiritual side to all of that is, is really making sense to him. And I'm watching his mind just open up. I'm watching his life open up and his kids' lives open up. Wow. And so, so just pouring into him, you know, I could go on and on about about cases where I'm watching God just change people's lives. And yeah. so Todd is, Todd is one of those where he's just really coming into coming into his own and learning what everything has been for. And so mm -hmm. rather than, rather than being a place, I say it all the time that you can be recovered. I think, you know, we, I think we, you and I have a mutual friend you might've had on here, Adam Vibe Gunton. He's yeah. recovered on purpose. And I, yeah. and I truly feel that where people can be recovered. And I think that in recovery, um, there's like a, there's like a mindset that somehow you're always an addict. Right. And I truly mm -hmm. believe that when God really enters that, that you can be set free of anything. And so I love watching people be set free and actually recovered and not just like caught in this loop of recovery. And so that's, right. that's kind of what I pour into people. Same thing with yeah. Matt in Toledo, Ohio. I just watched him. I was like, Hey man, God's going to show up for, for you. You know, you're, he's, he's had some, uh, some felony stuff and some other things before mm -hmm. that prevented him from getting his own apartment here for a little while while he works for the Oxford house. And I was like, man, God, is, God is going to show up for you. Like there's, there's no doubt you're, you're pouring into a path and you're pouring into, into your, into your recovery where I know that God is going to show up for you. And he came to me after he found this, he, he found this, he found this house that was for Oxford house. Right. And he's like, he's like, it has an apartment below it. Do you think you guys could buy this house? And I was like, yeah, man, let's, we can, we can buy that house. And so he goes, he goes, dude, you have no idea what, what this means. He's like, I, I did everything. I tried to find an apartment everywhere. I tried to find this landlord, that landlord. And then all I knew that was left to do was pray. And then, wow. and then this house, he's like, and then this house shows up and then you tell me you're buying this house and then you're going to rent this apartment to me. And I was like, I was like, dude, you needed to pray first and it would happen faster, you know? <laughs> and, and so it's, it's really cool to kind of watch that show. It's, it, it's, it's weird and, and humbling having guys like Matt and, and, and Todd and people around the country kind of saying, you know, I like Matt right after that, he's like, you're the most amazing person I've ever met. How did that happen? I'm like, dude, that is all God. I am. A, right. I, I've been a wreck my entire life, just working, 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 working yeah. and going, going like crazy, doing my own thing. And in this season where I recognize that God has been in control the entire time, that, that he's, he's step, he's put every stone in front of my path mm. to step on. And the thing that I, the thing that you think I just did, God just did that. And you could have prayed first and he would have done it faster. Yeah. So yeah. that's good. But I think that sometimes we go to God as a last resort yeah. But that, those are amazing stories. And I love so many aspects of that, Jared. But one of the things that stood out to me was the fact that you get a front row seat in what God is doing in the lives of these people. And I've never fixed anybody. And I'm guessing you've never fixed anybody. But we can be vessels that God can work through. Right. And yeah. we get to partner with Jesus. We co-labor with Christ in the Garden of Life. And it's just so amazing. And for you to hear these success stories, I mean, you work very, very hard. Uh, you're amazing at what you do, but it's not always easy. And, you know, you hear stories of four women relapsing together and leaving. And it's like, oh, you know, it can be very discouraging to hear those reports. And then you get the other side where people get it. Their transforma the transformation is amazing. But the most important thing that you said is that he is starting to connect with God and he's growing spiritually. Yeah. And that will probably be the one thing that keeps him moving forward in recovery. I agree with that. At first that, 
those those hard ones were setting in quickly. I feel like God was showing me that going into recovery and going into uh, the addiction field, um, He showed me pretty quickly that it was going to be hard on my heart because mm-hmm. I want I want what's best for people. I, right. I I want to I want them to be able to see the gospel like I see like I see mm-hmm. Jesus. I want that relationship for any, anybody and everybody that I connect with. And yeah. one of the one of the first times where He showed me that was going to be really 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 hard for me to to start to overcome was. One of the first houses that we had, I made a trip out to Colorado and uh, an outreach worker that that uh, that worked there. Um, I basically was in this house and we were talking about God and we were really we were really born in. I mean, if you open that door with me, we're going to talk about God yes. all day. You know, if that yeah. when when that door gets open, we're just we're going to go there. And so uh, we really, really poured into to you know, how, how he could press forward in his relationship with God. And we really started talking about some scripture that he had questions on and we really poured into that. Well, I spent a weekend in Colorado and Sunday when I left Sunday night, I found out that this individual had relapsed Mm. and I was like, instantly, I was like, wait a second. Like, did I, like, is that the effect that I had on him? You know, that was the question that I had. I was like, wait a second. I was in town. We were talking about God and he somehow relapsed when I was there. Is that, Mm -hmm. is that what happened? And then, very shortly thereafter, I learned that he had relapsed and that he was he was sort of lying about it. And okay. then God was really pressing into his heart to just be honest about where he was mm-hmm. at and 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 confess where he was at. And I truly feel like the, that God's not going to, you know, he's he's not gonna reshape your life unless you're being honest with yourself, right? And he's unless right. you're being honest with him, unless you repent for sins, unless you, you know, in those things. So at first I felt like, oh man. I made this guy relapse. And then mm-hmm. shortly afterwards, I was like, wait a second. I brought him closer into relationship with God because repenting and 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 being honest about your next steps is 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 gonna be, you know, is is imperative in that relationship. Um For and sure. you have to restore yourself in order to be able to grow. And I feel like that was that was really hard for me though. That was God showing me that yeah. this is gonna be hard. You know, there's gonna Absolutely. be times where you have no control over what's happening in other people's lives. They are going to go back to, to the same cycle that, you know, same cycle that I was in, right? Like I didn't, I've never been, been addicted to, to substance per se. Um, but I've certainly been addicted to failing and I've been addicted to running into the wrong walls and addicted <laughs> to my own self and like what I wanted out of the situation rather than what hey. God wanted. So wa- watching him come through that was actually pretty, pretty cool. That is cool. And I'm just going to guess that when those things happen and people relapse, that the enemy will be there going, oh, you know what? You're not making a difference. And you probably said the wrong thing and you probably did the wrong. You know, that condemnation can come in from the enemy because let's face it, he doesn't want us to do what we're doing. Right. And so, yeah, I can totally see that happening for sure. That is that is the battle. Keep him, keep it, keep him out of there and keep pressing forward. <laughs> One of the, yeah, absolutely. Keep pressing forward is the key. Uh, but you mentioned earlier, Jared, that you were working with somebody who's really turned his life around with God's help and it's affecting his family. So even if you help one person, and I know you're helping way more than one person, but even if you help one person, then the domino effect of that person with his children and his wife and his family and his friends, it's far reaching. And that is amazing. Amen. Amen. Like we, you know, I keep, I've called that God's multiplication for quite a long time. And uh, I think where you and I met through, through hundred X, we talk about that God's multiplication um, is is very real. And I I think that when I didn't make sense to me, why you go out, why you leave the 99 and go after the one, right? Mm -hmm. Right. First, in, in what we do in addiction, that can like one person, one life, you know, Todd's life that we're, that we're talking about, Matt's life that we're talking about, Gene's life that we're talking about, the, yeah. the individuals that I'm dealing with, it just one person can have an infinite effect and you, you don't, you don't even know how far that can go. I mean, even, so like an example of that, as I, as I, as I pour into our houses, I say like mowing our lawns in the, in Oxford houses, because they have to do their own chores, right? Mm-hmm. Mowing your lawn every week and taking care of your lawn can be life of death, life or death for thousands of people. And I say that wow. with the like smile and love, like say, 
say the first Oxford house that I went to go look at that I would potentially invest in, right? Say I went to go look at that and the yard is, is 18 inches tall and mm. you know, there's mold growing on the siding or something. I don't right. want to buy it. I don't want to buy one of those. I wouldn't want to buy one. And I certainly wouldn't want to set a goal to buy a thousand of them. Like, like we're doing through our business now. Right. right. So if that, if that one lawn wasn't mowed, right. If mm -hmm. then I might look at that one house and be like, uh, you know, I, I can't invest in, in, in Oxford houses. I can't buy houses for people who need right. them. I, I'm not, I'm not going to do that. So like literally one lawn being mowed could be thousands of lives saved and hundreds of thousands of lives. So then you take into account, and I think about this all the time. It's a big part of our vision. So I'm glad you brought that up. So the one, you know, say, say we, you know, our, our goal is immediately is a thousand beds for recovering addicts in 2021. Amen. So that, so we've raised, we've raised a bunch of capital so that we can just go buy houses and, and, um, and really pour in, like pour in and in love into these houses. So our goal is a thousand beds, say those thousand people, um, there's, there's, you know, say each one of those people gets, gets recovered and they have three kids, right? Yeah. In five generations, that's 243,000 new people just wow. because of one year of work. Right. And that's so incredible. We, yeah. So our, we have no idea the effect that we can have just mm -hmm. by changing one life. And, you know, if we, if we really, really give into what God wants, you can see that one life over and over and over and over again. And that is absolutely my driving force. So that is an amazing, amazing example of how the kingdom works, Jared. And I'm just thinking about the person mowing the lawn. The person mowing the lawn can have the mindset of, I'm just mowing the lawn. I'm just a peon. I'm not up here where Jared is. I'm just a peon mowing the lawn. But when you have the attitude that we're doing everything unto God from big and small things and, and in the kingdom, we have a certain measuring stick, right? But God has a different one for the kingdom. And the person mowing the lawn is just as important as the person buying the house or investing or the yep. person who maybe smiles at somebody or buys them a coffee that can give him hope to get through the next day and maybe step into recovery and then step into their destiny. I mean, we need to have that attitude of, of serving God in a multitude of areas. I love it. Amen. Yeah. I say that over and over to that, to the guy mowing the yard or taking care of the kitchen or those things. Like I'm, I'm just, I'm just a, I'm just a guy from Marysville, Washington. You know, they look at me as like big investor dude or whatever. So my, a big part of my, my job is to like break down that, break down that wall. It's like, no, no, we are, we are partners here. Like we, this is, this is important. We are saving lives and right. we are, you know, this, every, everybody has their role. And like, I somehow, if you, if you somehow think like I got, um, got lucky to, to be on this side of it, like I, I'll, I'll take your side of it too. Let's just, we're in this fight together. Like I'll come, you know, we'll, we will mow along. We'll do whatever it takes. Like this is my, this is what God's put in front of me. And that doesn't mean he can't put it in front of you because I was literally mowing lawns three years ago, right? right. But to make ends meet in the winter when I was telling you things didn't work, whatever, I, I'll, I'll mow lawn. I put up some Christmas lights. There was a, there was a winter where it's like, you know what? Like things are short. I'm serving my, my family. I'm, I'm, right. I'm on a ladder putting up Christmas lights for people. Like I, I am a hundred percent willing to do that job. And I'm thankful that you were a hundred percent willing to do this job uh, to save people's lives. And if, and if what I do is, is something that you want to do, I'm a hundred percent here to teach you how to do it too. You know? So, but everybody's job is so important in the kingdom. I love how you said that. It is. It's all about the King and serving him yeah. and, uh, and loving the people you serve. So that's awesome. And the number you threw out earlier, what was that again? It was, it was a big number of people that could be impacted by just one life. Yeah. So we, so what I, what I was saying is like our, our goal for one year of, of beds that we want, that's in five generations, that's 243,000 new people that have the potential to be created that would, that might not have existed before. So that, that is so encouraging, Jared, because as we look at addictions and we, we can look at the big picture and just become so overwhelmed with it, that we do nothing, right? Yeah. It, that it, it, It's just so massive. It's like, well, what can I do? I'm just one person, right? But one person with God is majority. And that multiplication happens. And, and other people around the country and around the world are doing similar things. And so that's how we're going to defeat this 
evil that that's in our lives by serving the king, being kingdom minded people and kingdom minded people are not jealous of what this ministry is doing, what that ministry is doing. Right. We're all working together because we all serve the same king. And that's how we're going to do this. It's multiplication. And that is incredibly encouraging and powerful. I love that you said that. Thanks. It's pretty cool. Yay. And I I was going to give you a standing ovation, but if I stand, it'd be kind of awkward. I'd leave the, (laughs) leave the picture. And my dog who made a guest appearance would probably come over and want petted again. (laughs) But um, you mentioned Adam vibe gotten and you're right. He has been a guest on our show and I love what he's doing with recovered on purpose. I try to promote his things when I can, but he does not have the mindset of I'm an addict, right? He he's a recovered person. He has a new mindset and that is huge in overcoming. And I don't want to get too far on the weeds in this, but that's one kind of pet peeve that I have is when people refer to themselves by their old nature. It's like when you see a butterfly, you don't say, wow, look at that flying caterpillar. (laughs) Isn't that amazing? (laughs) not a caterpillar anymore. It's a butterfly. The caterpillar is gone. And so I did put that in my book, which I shameless plug there, but it is my show and I can plug my book if I want to, but it's really important not to see yourself as the old you, right? Yeah. That's huge. Yeah. That's so good. So good. I love it. I love that. You know, I I feel like this, it's needs to be injected more and more and more into the recovery community that, that there is there is something on the other side of this. You're not caught in this forever. You are like you said. Uh, I love that. You're not you're not a flying caterpillar. I'm totally using that. I'm stealing from you. That's that's you happening. It. You got it. No <laughs> worry. Well, one of the things that you mentioned earlier reminded me of something else that just so happens to be the opening quote of my book, and it is that we can't force a person to believe something or receive a message that they're not ready for but never underestimate the power of planting a seed. So even in the situations where it looks like maybe it didn't work out, you know, it, it, it looks like a failure and the enemy will definitely want you to see it as a failure. You have planted seeds and somewhere down the road, that seed will germinate and that person will be ready and maybe come back to Oxford house or go into something else. But I always remember that when I have apparent failures, like, oh, this person relapsed or whatever, you know, it didn't seem to be that happy ending we were going for. But at the same time, seeds were planted and some seeds, as we know in nature, God, God reveals himself through nature. Some seeds take a long time to germinate. Some of them have to go through fire. Some of them have to soak in water. And some of them have to go through the digestive system of a monkey <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> so be encouraged there. That could be where your seat is. Yeah. I mean, they're, they're everywhere. And, and I, I'm so super grateful to be able to see that exactly the way that you just described it. Right. You, the seeds, uh, seeds planted, you know, they, they come to fruition in so many different ways, especially in humans. Cause we've all been through so much. We're all yeah. seven plus billion of us. We're all made different and we've all right. been through, so much different stuff to get to whatever mindset that we have right now. Yes. Um, and so you never know that, never know the power of the, of the seed that's planted, but you do know that you need to keep planting seeds and you know, I know that God is faithful and he's going to, he's going to continue to work in, you know, in that person. And so like I was, like I was describing with, uh, with the guy in Colorado where I, where I felt like I felt discouraged at first. I felt like mm-hmm. potentially like I had something to do with, uh, you know, with that. It's, there's so much that matters in recovery of, of accountability, right? Mm-hmm. Some of the, some of the seeds uh, that I see planted are, are, are firm love, right? There's, I feel right. like the, the cycle of re- the cycle of addiction and recovery is a constant lie to yourself. And you're you're lying to yourself about what you need in the moment, and and right. the, the enemy is lying in your in your brain, and God God wants to speak truth and light and love into those moments, and sometimes that looks like, no man, you've got to stop doing this, you got to stop this cycle. God loves you more than the lies that are going on in your head, you know. And sometimes that seed is uncomfortable. Sometimes that seed is amazing. You know. Sometimes right. it's it's fun to say and you can see it, but sometimes it's in this, in our realm of recovery, sometimes it's hard to say, 
but it, every single seed is is necessary and and being really in 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 tune with the holy spirit and really in line with the race relationship with the king is is super important so that you know when the holy spirit's calling you to have that firm word or the soft loving tone whatever whatever it looks like the holy it's going to look different to each person uh, yeah. because that seed needs to be different and you and being in tune with what that seed needs to look like for these people that's when right. you watch the seeds multiply faster. That's what, I feel like that's what's happening in my life right now is, is right. like just kind of knowing which seed to plant and when to plant it and mm-hmm. really, really, really asking God for, for, for wisdom in that regard. And you're watching the seeds come to fruition faster. It's super cool. That is super cool. I love that. And the Bible says that God disciplines those he loves. And so like a good father, he disciplines people. And I know that a lot of people in recovery maybe have had father issues or father wounds. And so that's one of the things that needs to be overcome. And like you said, when you lean into the Holy Spirit, is he telling you to be firm? Is he telling you to be soft? Does this person need a hug? Does this person need a kick in the pants? That's where the connection, he knows exactly what we need. And he is an amazing father. I love it. Yeah, he brings everything we've been through, right? And I, you know, as I as I say to people on this exact subject, I have I've got my own daddy issues, right? We all have a we all we all have our own own earthly fathers, and I feel like that's a that's one thing I definitely connect with recovering uh, men on. Um, right. it, is just that, like you know, everybody had their own their own dad. And if I look look back on my life, my dad was pretty a pretty awesome guy, but in my twenties. I blamed him for all sorts of stuff. Like right. he, he messed me up. I never knew God. I never knew, you know, I could talk about all the, I was overly competitive, you know, which is, which is absolutely something that God's using in this season because I don't, I don't know how to slow down or stop or, and, you know, I right. don't know how to, to, to not just keep going at something. At first I was like, man, I like, the, I was mad at my dad for some of the stuff that he did, but seeing what, you know, getting in a, a real example through scripture and a real example through life of what a good father is. And yeah. I'm so thankful to God that he shows up over and over and shows us what a good father looks like. And it Absolutely. looks like exactly that. You might either, whether you're, whether he's disciplining us um, or, or he's blessing us, whatever that looks like, I truly see it as like, he's, you know, he's, he's going to be smiling either way. There, he's, yeah. he's not, he's not disciplining us in anger. He's, you know, if we're, if we're frustrated with ourselves, he's picking our chin up with a smile on his face saying, yeah, yeah. you screwed this up. You need to, here's, here's what, here's, here's what happened. And here's what we can do to change that. And here's what you can use this story to help somebody else overcome the same thing. But I, I feel like the discipline from, from God always looks that way. And so we have to be able to transfer that, right? If somebody gets, if somebody relapses, if somebody, you know, goes to into the darkest moment of their life, mm. we can speak into that in truth, but with a smile on our face. We're not angry at them. We, we, right. we all need discipline and we just need love. And so sometimes love looks tough. It sure does. Yeah, I can definitely relate to what you're saying, Jared, because for the last 10 years, I've worked with women who are overcoming life controlling issues. And I would say that the biggest commonality is lack of a loving father. We know that earthly fathers aren't perfect, but at the end of the day, their job is supposed to point us to the best father we have. But one of the things I need to remind myself of is that we can't give away what we don't have. So if our earthly fathers didn't have it, how can we expect them to give it away? But when God enters our lives, we can break that cycle and pass on that loving parent to our children. And that's been my goal with my own kids. Amen. Mine too. Sure. It showed its, uh, it showed its loving, uh, head last night, right? Like my, my kid's 10 and, and, uh, I feel like there's, I feel like there's, a uh, you know, some stuff going on in his world where I could, I could probably be, be very frustrated by it. Right? right. We could just, I could just be like, what, like what the devil get out of there. What is happening with this kid? The hormones, are, hormones are changing. All sorts of stuff's happening. Um, you know, what's going on with that? I, I could be frustrated by it, but I'm not frustrated by it. I just want to love the kid through it. And so he has to understand what he's doing is not right and and all those things. And I have to love on him through it. I feel like we lost, uh, we lost Michelle. I mean, I'll keep talking. 
Hey. Okay, we had a little hiccup there. I don't think we lost any of the previous recording because it's still showing the time. But I don't know what happened, but we're back. Sorry about yeah. that. We were talking about your 10-year-old, and I remember those days with my son for sure. Yeah. Yeah, just just last night it was like, you know, I, you know, you can see the the hormones and the things like start to happen in his life, and it it's almost like right. it's almost like his brain shuts off, right? It's like just frustration <laughs> enters, and his this smart little loving human I've known for ten years somehow just disappears uh, for certain sections of time right now, and it's yeah. almost like every every night, and I feel like uh, looking back, like I could. Uh, I could do as my earthly father would have done, which has been like, mm -hmm. like, all right, yeah, this is not okay. You're getting a, a right. woman or whatever it is, and you go, you go to your room and figure it out. Um, instead, it's like we're gonna we're gonna have a serious discussion over this, and mm -hmm. then we're gonna be able to talk through uh, what's going on. Um, when your brain shuts, turns back on, I'm gonna be right here with the same smile on my face, and we're gonna work this out. It's, it looks like discipline because you don't get to talk to your mama that way. But, uh, right. but we're gonna we're gonna work this out, and just like you said, we're gonna break the we're gonna break the cycle, and we're gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna introduce you to what God would want from you right now. Um, and so it was That's so good. pretty cool. That is very cool. Well, Jared, as we wrap up here, uh, you are helping other people find their God given purpose. It sounds like you have found your God given purpose to do what you're doing now, round tires and all. What's your vision for the future? If you could just dream big with God to 2021 and beyond, what what do you see coming down the road for you and this ministry and what you're doing? Oh man, so much. So um, I feel like I had a I had a a, a poor relationship with money for my entire life. So we've mm -hmm. we've been actually uh, we've been actually talking about uh, impact and what that really looks like. Our company is called Impact Impact Cash Flow. And so we, we do cash flowing real estate, but impact is at the front for a reason, right? And so we have to have more and more and more and more investors involved in what we're doing in order to keep growing and keep buying houses and keep doing what we're doing. Right. Uh, so what I would say our vision right now is, um, our vision right now, like I said, is a thousand beds in 2021. Mm -hmm. We have a very, very, very good start on that. Uh, right now, we just, we just finished, um, we just finished a house which brought us to 185 beds. Uh, so mm -hmm. far in 18 months. So averaging 10 beds for basically a house a month for, uh, for recovering addicts to this point. And that's with, that's been totally piecing it together. So now we have a big investor partner who comes in, who's come in and basically gives us capital when it's needed uh, to continually buy houses. So our immediate goal is a thousand beds. That's about a hundred houses across the country. Uh, I'm moving, like I said, I'm moving to Florida. So in the immediate future, we see 50 of those hundred houses being bought in Florida. There's a, there's a huge need for Oxford house and for recovery, uh, houses, uh, in Florida. So we're moving to Florida mm -hmm. hot and heavy. And, and the biggest portion of what we're doing is really, really bridging the gap between Oxford house and investors because so much, so much of their history has been kind of Oxford House fighting with investors and and people looking to profit from these houses rather than become a partner and save these people's lives. And so we've designed our system to go where they need us, when they need us, and to be their partner and to love on them. So Todd mm -hmm. coming in is God-given purpose. What we're doing is we're proactively working with each house uh, and we're super thankful that we're doing this in 2021 because we can use Zoom and each house can see us and our faces yeah. and they can see that we love them and we care about them. So our immediate is, is that a thousand beds, but we also want to make sure every single person in those thousand beds knows that we love them and we're here to support them uh, within, within that house. So Todd's working really, really hard um, on that system with me to make sure that we have touch points with our houses, every single person in every single house every month. Uh, and they know that we're here to love on. So that's, that's beautiful. And I love Todd's story because it really shows how God brings things full circle that he was somebody who was served by this ministry. And now he's somebody who is serving in this ministry. And I love when God does that. So that is amazing. And Jared, we know the need is great, but kingdom minded people bring a solution into the world and we carry the King and he is the ultimate solution. So at the end of the day, people need Jesus. Well, I have totally enjoyed getting to know you, hearing your story. I so appreciate you taking the time to come on the Voices of Recovery as our guest. And I know that God will continue to bless what you've put your hand to. So 
Thank you so much, Jared. I will definitely put the information for the Oxford House after we broadcast here so that people can connect with that and help or get help. Awesome, Michelle. Thank you so much. Merry Christmas. Yes. Merry Christmas. Enjoy the boys. Will do. Thank you. Bye-bye. I just love when people are a solution to the problems. You know, we all see the great need, but a lot of times we just want to talk about it and complain about it instead of doing something about it. And maybe you're in a place where you don't know what to do. And I totally understand that, but you can connect with people who are in the trenches and who are making a difference like Jared and like other people that I've had on Voices of Recovery. So I just want to thank everybody for watching this episode of Voices of Recovery. We're creating a safe place where people can go on their journey with God. And if you're new to our page, I'd love it if you give us a like or a follow so that you don't miss any of this content. And if you feel led, share this message out because I'm sure that there's somebody on your page who needs to hear what Jared had to say today. So I want to bless everybody and have a great day. And thanks again for watching. And we'll see you next time on the Voices of Recovery. Bye-bye.